57. Online classes to be muted so that the others can concentrate. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to today's lesson discussion, which is a very interesting lesson. Um, before we start, I would like us to introduce ourselves. And uh, yeah, just do introduction, then we do we go straight into the lesson. I want to start with my elder here. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath online viewers. Uh, my name is Elijah Bob, Nairobi East, SDA Church. Happy Sabbath to church members and online viewers. My name is Evelyn Odiambo, and I welcome you to this Sabbath in a very special way. Happy Sabbath. My name is Ambrose Nyangao. I'm one of the elders in this church, and I want to welcome you. I'll be moderating, and we shall be having a very interesting discussion. Very briefly, this quarter's lesson is God's mission, my mission. God's mission, my, my mission. mission. I think it's very interesting. Last Sabbath, Elder Bob will give us a synopsis of what we went through. But this Sabbath, this Sabbath is about excuses excuses that can cause you not to deliver in the mission so excuses to avoid mission first of all it is god's mission my, my mission. mission but in the process there are excuses that's what we are going to learn today yes before we go learn today today i want elder bob to just give us a brief of what we'll discuss last week and possibly concentrate on the character that we were learning from. Thank you so much. Uh, the, generally, this lesson quarter is very interesting. God's mission, my mission. Uh, I was wondering why the title was not given our mission. Now that mission, we take it personally as my mission. So God's mission is my mission. So last week we were talking about sharing God's mission. And one of the characters that we studied last uh, uh, week in the last lesson was this character of Abraham. See, Abraham, when he was called, he was called by God. He obeyed throughout. He didn't complain in as much as he met uh, different challenges along the way, but he, he obeyed God. He had faith in God. And uh, the, other, the, other, the other thing that we found in Abraham was that he had this gift of hospitality. He welcomed guests the visitors, which he did not know. And uh, after, after welcoming them, he realized that he welcomed God and his angels. And this hospitality, we need to have it in order for us to share God's mission. And then Abraham also, he loved everyone. Remember when uh, these visitors told him that they are going to destroy Sod Sodom and Gomorrah, he pleaded with them that do you really mean that you are going to destroy the whole city, even if you get 50? If you get 50, no. If you get 40, if you get that, even up till 10, Abraham was pleading to them because, not because uh, Lot was there, but for, he was pleading, he had the love for everyone. And then the spirit of prayer. We also learned that we need to pray even for those who we termed as unprayer for. The enemies, we need to pray for them. And this was one of the characters of Abraham in order to meet God's mission. And therefore, thank, it is important for us to know that as we take God's mission as, our, as my mission, let's consider the, 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 the characters of this man. Abraham. In fact, I dare paraphrase last week's lesson as God's mission, my mission. Yes. So before we start today's lesson, uh, Sister Evelyn, could you kindly lead us into prayer so that we enter in today's lesson? Let's believe and pray. Dear Jesus, we come before your presence this Sabbath morning as we purpose to delve into your word, to study more on the excuses that you always give to me for mission. We pray that, Lord, you may open our spiritual minds and spiritual ears to hear and hearken unto your voice through the learnings that you are going to get today. 
May your Holy Spirit guide us throughout this session. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, today we are doing excuses to avoid mission. And I have to place this book away from me so that I can explain better how I feel it. <laughs> Today's lesson is focusing largely on Jonah. Jonah is a familiar story in the Bible, but just in case you have not read it and read it and read it again, and for you to understand it very well, please read the book of Jonah from chapter 1 to chapter 4. It is a four-chapter book, and that's it. Also, go and read the book of Nahum, so that in the book of Nahum, you will understand the kind of life or the kind of evil that existed in a city called Nineveh, where God sent Jonah to go to. But when God sent Jonah to go to Nineveh, Elder Bob or Evelyn, whichever one of you thinks, where did Jonah go? And why did Jonah choose to go? When we understand all these things, we will, uh, uh, why Jonah chose to go, we shall read the memory text and conclude with it later on. Thank you so much, Elder. This lesson, today's lesson, or this week's lesson, is very relevant to the Seventh-day Adventist Church today since we are a church called to mission. But often the excuses are the ones that hinder us. Jonah was sent to, according to the lesson writer, to present-day Iraq, right? Yes. And uh, he decided to go to present-day southern Spain. And if that was the case today, I'm sure myself I would have chosen that better option as well. When you we get your map, Zuri, is southern <laughs> Spain very close to Iraq? It's not <laughs> close. <laughs> it's not close. But mm. according to him, Tarshish was a better option. Was a, a, a more safer, I would, I would call it. Mm. A was more safer place in I'm this context. What I'm trying to from you is was <laughs> touching the same direction as Nineveh. No, it was going like the opposite direction. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So he decides to go this opposite direction because of the fears he had. This, this, this uh, capital Nineveh was known for a lot of wickedness. And so in his mind as a human, he was like, how does God just send me to go and preach to a, a, a city that his fate is already decided? By the way, not just wickedness. It was also Gross. authority and power. Yes. They were yes. so powerful over that region. Yes, so in my opinion, that was his greatest fear. His, his fear the was... wickedness that was... Thank you. Now, number one thing that we need to know, to remember, is that Jonah was a prophet, a prophet of God, yes. and an Israelite. Mm. And remember, Jonah knew these people very well, what they did to them, the Israelites. Mm. The relationship that was there between Assyrians and the Israelites. They had historical injustices. Injustices. Mm. That these people, they, <laughs> historical they, injustices. These people need to be wiped out of the, 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 the face of the earth. Mm. And that was what is in their mind. Mm. And therefore now God is coming and telling John to go to an, a, a, an enemy territory mm. in order for these guys to be saved. Mm. John had no option, but according to him, mm. but to take a different, a different direction. direction. In yes. fact, in our region, yes. or in our times, I think most of us can remember the apartheid in South Africa. Yes. And the injustices that went around by the apartheid system. Yes. So now God is telling you, mm. you who has been ruled by the apartheid system, to go and preach to the people who have been, who ruled you and who so that you save them. <laughs> Not quite an easy task. And you know, as Elder is saying, Israelites were protective of their God. Mm. So in as much as they had this in historical injustices with the, the, the other nations, they were like, in as much as they have done A, B, C, D to us, at least we still have our God. But then now, this God is asking Jonah to go share the God they possess and have with another nation. That was like impossible. In other words, there were many other gods around. Yes, there were many other gods because in the experience in the boat, mm -hmm. you see, there are many other gods but Jonah when asked to introduce himself, he says, I am a Hebrew and I fear God. A God who creates heaven, earth and the sea. Not any other God. To mean there were other gods. Thank you. And when they recognize his God, they do, they, they, there is a total change in their mindset. So one of the excuses Jonah had, which we do have, is fear. Yes, fear. Yes. 
the next excuse that we commonly have. And John also had it. <laughs> False view. False view. Now, Elder, <laughs> I am not too sure whether vision can also be false. See, what you <laughs> see is what it is. Someone once said that mirror, a mirror can deceive you. Uh -huh. because, you because when you're looking, yourself, you, when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, the mirror will tell you that your right eye is the left eye. Oh, yes. Yeah, if you stand in front of the mirror, mm. your left eye will be the right the eye. Right yeah. yes. So is this view <laughs> So the number one view that comes to my mind, really, is that Jonah, from his behavior, remember you told me that Jonah went the opposite direction. Yes. Very opposite. Because Jonah has this message. He is a prophet. Yes. He knows when God sends you somewhere, he goes with you. Yes. So Jonah has this kind of view that if when he went I the opposite inside, direction, he, won't he would go, be there. He won't accompany me uh, there, yes. Yes. Mm. That this God, so he was kind of limiting God to where God can be and what God can do. At that particular, any other, any other false view that uh, uh, Jonah had? No. The other false view, in my opinion, was that Jonah had this feeling. You've just mentioned it a few minutes ago, that uh, because the people that are in Nineveh have done so much wrong against God's people, mm. God should not be having mercy on them. That is a view of God that Jonah was kind of painting yes. that is not true. And we do a lot. Mm. Yeah, very often we even cast our neighbors in our prayers. I will neighbor one. Yeah, there's a common uh, phrase, mbinguni huoni. Mbinguni huoni, unabia mutu ivo. Na we mwenyewe ya uko uko. And actually, uh, leave alone that. Mm -hmm. We have so many in every, right, presently, mm -hmm. that we realize that we... Uh, group of certain people that these ones, these ones, these ones are seen as these ones, no way. Mm. They're not, uh, actually they're not going to heaven. You have, you have cast the lot. Mm. And actually this is what what happened here. Mm. That Jonah knew, uh, Gomorrah, I mean uh, Nineveh, Apana, th those ones. Those ones are not. But the, in God's view, these were candidates of heaven. Yes. It happens a lot even in today's context as Seventh-day Adventist Church. When you organize for missions even for as a church to go to, which criteria are used to select the places where people are going for mission? One of them is there are already some Christians there. There are already some Christians. What of an area where there are completely no Christians? Like in Nairobi, you want to go and do uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Nairobi Isili Mall. Yes. That's a, a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> or you want to go to Northeastern, yes. or actually go across the country and go to Somaliland. Yes. yes. The, the land of Somalis. Yes, so th these are some of the false views that I would say we have. And there, there is that aspect of be not equally yoked, mm -hmm. you know? When you'll send someone to this kind of an entered area, they'll tell you, eh, who could knock? I'm not supposed to go because... And they'll quote you the Bible. Yes, one of the phrases here, the lesson writer says, one common misunderstanding is that God's desire for us is to focus on our salvation and to remove ourselves from the wickedness of the world around us. Yet, there are still others in the wicked world who need to be removed as well and not us focusing on ourselves. So Jonah had that false view. Yes. That salvation is for him. And the, uh, and the Israelites. Israelites. Yeah. Period. And salvation is for people that... was A human being. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, by, by nature, by human nature, even as much as Jonah was not... Uh, Jonah was uh, actually complaining. Jonah was bitter. Bo Jonah was a bitter man. He was a very bitter man. A very bitter man. That bitterness... That Especially bitterness. towards the end of chapter 4. Of chapter 4. You will yes. see it. Yes. Mm. You will see that Jonah was bitter even after the never has been uh, saved. saved. Him, he still thinks God. What? What? You see why I didn't want to go? Yeah. You were supposed to drop a bombshell and then kind of clear those people. <laughs> now, the other excuse is the inconveniences that Jonah. And this one of inconveniences. <laughs> let me just say something that I had another presenter, another teacher also <laughs> say, that Jonah was avoiding an inconvenience. But how many inconveniences did he go through only More to come out with an inconvenience? 
more than just just mention a few of them. The inconveniences he had to go through was one, wasted his cash booking a ticket to Tarshish, <laughs> which he, he never to get to, to Tarshish. He mm-hmm. never got to Tarshish. Mm-hmm. He had to stay in the sea in the fish of in the belly of the fish for three days. Three days and three nights. And three nights. Another inconvenience is the same inconvenience he was avoiding. He had to still go to Nineveh and preach <laughs> anyway, again. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. No, yes. yes. <laughs> so those are, yeah, so those are some of the inconveniences. So I, I was wondering. Mm. Now when A bit too, uh, was no fa- fair to be paid. There was no fair to yes. pay. So this direction he had to pay. He had to pay. Yes. And at the same, you know, at the same. And there was no sea in this other in the direction of the navy. <laughs> yes. He had to in, actually Jonah also inconvenienced these guys who are, who are in the boat. He inconvenienced the other uh, sailors. Sailors, yes, yeah. sailors. He inconvenienced the yeah, serious microphone. Eh? Yes. Imagine all the luggages that were in this had ship to be thrown had to be thrown mm. outside. Then he chose the worst inconvenience. I would rather not leave. <laughs> and actually, according, according to Jonah, when he, when he received the message, he said, I'd rather die than to go to the Navy over my dead boy. And that, that cements what Elder was saying of his bitterness yes. and the extent to which Jonah did not want this message to get to Nineveh. He's like, instead of me going to Nineveh, let me die inside the sea. You know? Okay. I had not seen it like that because me to initially I thought... that he's ready to die than go. But in initially I thought he was ready to save the other sailors. No. There was the aspect of saving the other sailors, yes. But on the flip side, mm. he's still not going to Nineveh. Yes, especially if he dies. Yes, if he dies. he's not going to Nineveh, and that deal will be done. So we sometimes accept the inconvenience of losing life. Yes. Just so that we do not uh, carry the mission. The mission of God, yes. yes. Okay. Give me a typical example and at you home. Remember, we, rea- re- we realized that uh, the, first, uh, the second lesson we were talking about, the triunion God. Mm. God... The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are involved in this mission. Mm. So there is no way this mission will fail. This no mission way. will succeed. No way. Yes. And this is something that Jonah didn't know. Mm. Yes. He may thought, I get to I find a Mimi, mm. and therefore. <laughs> Yeah, Elder is asking a typical examples of how we'd rather die yes. than well, go for would, a mission. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I will not even look at it as the extreme example of going to a far off place, but just a mission even in the nearby place. I'll give an excuse that I have a sick patient, yet mm. I don't have. Mm. In my mind, cinema, I've created some, some sickness. Y- yes, yes. I'll say I'm going for some so uh, funeral at home. Yes. I'm going for some funeral at home, which is not existing because I know Elder won't because follow up to know today if Today is music, Sabbath, and you are a choir member. Yes. Lagini, there's something telling you today, me, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to sing. Eh. So I'd rather not, just for me not to take part, I'll give you extreme examples, extreme excuses that you will not even bother to follow up. Not knowing in my mind that God's mission, as Elder is saying, has to go on whether it will be stones or fish that will be used. Elder Bob. Go. How many churches did you pass before you reached here? About four. About four? Yes. Okay, in this particular case, probably there is no good reason. But I know people who would rather not go to the church nearby simply because of certain things, dislikes yes. they have around that church. I know people who would rather throw away food than give a starving neighbor yes. simply because they don't like that neighbor's behavior. Let the neighbor die of hunger than me give them money. Yes, or let even me die of hunger mm. than me giving them. Yes. Yeah. Here's Elder Bob. Now, uh, we, we need to understand that these inconveniences, even today, mm. we are causing them for ourselves. Mm. When God sent us, the first, 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 first of all, we'll ask, we'll ask ourselves, like, for instance, God sent us to one of these slums areas, like Kibera. What would you say? Is there an access road there? What time? How safe is it? How, how, how safe? safe? Is there electricity? <laughs> is there electricity? Mm, is there water? You see? Is, there, is the road tarmac? Is the road? 
I quality. don't have gum boots. Yeah. Yes, things like that. Like mm. now, I think it rained in concert. Mm. Yeah, I hope some. I hope some people didn't give an excuse of going to Konza. Now, for the sake of online viewers, Konza is one of the Sabbath schools of Nairobi have, East. Yeah. Mm. It's a bro approximately one and a half hours drive from Nairobi. Nairobi yes. And it is a, a relatively remote zone with a relatively small number of converts. Yes. So the inconvenience of not going to Konza is, is, is available to Konazo. The, the, the excuses of inconvenience. Yes. Yes. But last but not least, there's one thing we want to learn from Jonah about the excuses, which is the excuse of uncomfortable Confrontation. confrontations. What kind of uncomfortable confrontations did we have with Jonah's story? And let's be, as we discuss this, I'm, I'm hoping that you have read the book of Jonah so that you can see the, the things that we are talking about. But Jonah was a, 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 a character and a half in the Bible. <laughs> do, you really, do you love the character of Jonah? I think I am the character of Jonah. <laughs> what Jonah and me are loving it. When I look back, when I study the book of Jonah, mm. I see myself in almost every excuse mm. that Jonah had. Yes. yes. The last excuse. Yeah, now, the last, the, now this, it's in uh, Jonah, the, the fourth chapter. Mm. It, it's a very interesting confrontation. Now Jonah has gone and delivered the message. That it, that you know, after the, the that fish uh, vomited Jonah, I think Jonah took breath and all that kind of stuff. And then actually Jonah, Jonah realized that hey, the, I'm in Nineveh. When that thing uh, vomited him, he, he just realized, hey, this is Nineveh. And then the word of the Lord came to him, the same message that Jonah, I want you to deliver that message. So the guy just walked in and delivered the message. And the people of the neighbor received this message. And they repented. And actually God forgave them. Now Jonah is walking away waiting to hear the sounds of the bomb, like the ones in Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. And he's not hearing anything. And now God is coming and asking him, Now Jonah, do you have all the reasons to be bitter? Mm. <laughs> Why are you angry? Mm. Then Jonah is coming up and saying, Nilo, I knew, I knew. You are long suffering, you are loving God. Hmm? Mm. These people you are going to forgive. Them. And this is the reason as why I was running away from you. Mm. So instead of Jonah rejoicing with the heavens, mm. <laughs> Jonah is still angry <laughs> with the salvation that the Ninevites have received. Yani Jonah was afraid of coming face to face yes. with the outcome. Yes. But all that this happens very often mm. when there is a conflict and a team is sent for reconciliation. There is a, a percentage of the people involved in the conflict who want the conflict to continue mm -hmm. or to escalate. Yeah, it, it is sweeter if it, it continues. It is sweeter if it continues and gets more serious. You yeah, know? And some some and then, are benefiting out of this. Yes, because yeah. by the conflict continuing, some are benefiting big time. And some of them is just out of the hatred. Yes. <laughs> and some of them is just out of the hatred that this person should never at any time be forgiven by mm, all chances. Exactly. And so, when you go and have this resolution done and a sort of handshake, quote and quote, comes out, then like, we knew, Elder Ambrose, there was nothing you are going to do. That, yeah. have, you, have you gotten that comment? We, yeah, I've we had knew, it we knew, we knew you were just going to accept this, this people's nah. offer, you know? So it's something that often happens to us. At the, at the back of our mind, we are like, this thing should continue. Even today, for those who've had historical injustices, quote, unquote, uh, take an example of someone who maybe has been snatched, the parcel of land they had, whatever little they called wealth, and then now there is a reconciliation to be done at the family setup. There is a percentage, a good number of the family who never want this reconciliation to happen. At yeah. all. Let us remain the way we <laughs> yeah. are. Yeah. And that is what Jonah wanted. Mm. Actually, Let us remain with our God. Let him never perish as it should. Mm. Quote, and quote. Actually, it's very common among our neighborhood. Yes. You are a Christian. Your neighbor is not. Or maybe they are of a different faith. But you have this belief that this neighbor of yours is so evil. <laughs> a missionary comes into your village. Hosted by you. Hosted by your church. Goes to the neighbor. And you are telling them, don't, you shouldn't have gone to that you home. You should have gone to that home. 
that, that, that's the same guy who, is, uh, uh, who, who snatches away my chicken from my side. <laughs> and I've actually experienced a typical example of that. And I think we were with El Bob in that particular mission. It happens that people hate the other so much that they would rather not have those people benefit. It is a difficult confrontation with God and with the result, the outcome, yes. that the person who was your greatest enemy is now on the same side as you are. And Even in politics, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Yeah, bring, bring it in politics. You see, this, these people, this time, we are not going to leave for them. Mm. Now no, they, no hand check. No, no hand check. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, they reala realize that reconciliation has been done. There's a handshake has, has taken place. You see, they still remain. No, this thing ought to have remained the same way it is. In other words, there are some people who are, who are benefiting in this, and some want it, want reconciliation. So, in with us as Christians nowadays, how often do we find ourselves in such situation, in very such position, that whereby as I'm, I leave this place, I go to my house and I find my neighbor, because I know my neighbor. His character. Mm -hmm. Sometimes <laughs> you say, now, ooh, this, this one, she's not even supposed to live next to me. Mm -hmm. It's either I leave or he leaves, you see? Mm -hmm. Instead of taking the me message to him in order for him to perish. Little we should know that in God's mission, this is God's mission. Mm -hmm. The mission will succeed. The fruit is, 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 a, is God's work, not ours. Let's mm -hmm. take the mission, this mission as God's mission, not ours. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Having said that, Elder Bob, maybe Sister Eve will read for us the memory text. The book of Isaiah just turns it the other way around. Yes. We've admitted we have a lot of Jonas in us. I don't know whether you admit as much as I do. Uh, and we have met a lot of Jonas in our, in our Midwest. And uh, the church is full of Jonas. A lot. A, a lot of us. Mm. But what does Isaiah is, say? The, the church is full of Jonas and Ninevites. <laughs> oh, Ninevites. Yes. When we're talking about Jonah, we should not forget about the Ninevites. They are in here. Are yes, in here. actually, Elder, bring it to the context <laughs> even of visitations. Mm. Someone has gotten uh, some need for visitation. Yes. Mm. You are ever I'll, CND. I'll say, me, I'm not going. You are ever Why? CND. Mm. She never visits people or he never visits, or that person is this yes. way, his relationship with the church is this way. So I have passed a judgment to this person, not knowing that maybe this visitation is the mission mm. that is going to turn this person's heart to Christ. And myself. By the way, yes. there's something we might have missed. Is there a point where the mission was actually meant for Jonah? All through it was meant for Jonah. This okay. mission was meant for Jonah. This mission was meant for Jonah. Yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, <coughs> who is being ministered to? If, 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 if you are sent for a mission... Eh? like you're sent to preach. The message you're going to preach actually should preach to you first. Should confess you first before they, they, to convert the people. Mm -hmm. So this mission actually went <laughs> for Jonah before the Ninevites. So, what is the conclusion of today's Let me read the memory message. text first. No, the conclusion of today's message is in the memory text. It <laughs> says... Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, Lord send me. Here am I, Here am I Lord, Lord send, send me. me. Mm. That's probably what the lesson is telling us all along. Like in, in the case of Abraham, Abraham was actually coming up front. He was not even sent yes. to try and save other people. Then in the case of Jonah, Jonah, he was called to go, but he refused. Mm. But in Isaiah, what does the Bible say? That the Lord is looking for someone to send. Mm. And, the Lord, and the answer is, yeah. here am I, O oh Lord, send me. me. Elder Bob, you are concluding yeah. remarks as you make that comment. Let's look at the, this Isaiah person. You see, Isaiah was saying that he's living among, among the heathen. What he's seeing is just sin. What is coming out of his mouth was sin. Actually, he's in sin. And therefore, the angel came. The angel of the Lord came and put uh, that torch of light in his limb, in his tongue, 
and his sins were purged. And after this is when the message of the Lord is coming that whom shall I send? Now we have heard the messages of God and we have asked God to forgive us our sins. Now the Lord is calling us, who shall I send? We need to say, Lord, here am I, send me. So my parting shot here is that is in as much as we have Nineveh, we need to take the we need to take God's mission. And by taking God's mission is, we need to say, here am I, O Lord, send me. Sister Eva. Thank you, Elder. Uh, as the title of this quarter lesson says, God's mission, my mission. It didn't start with my mission, God's mission. This is God's work. Whether I do it or not, it will still be done. Let us be willing to listen and submit to God as he sends us. There's a song that says, brighten the corner where you are. It's not a must that we be sent miles and miles and kilometers away from our residence. To the duties that are near us, to our neighborhoods, we are always on mission every day, every time. Let us do that duty diligently and have a heart that uh, longs for the salvation of others. Even as you pray, you know, oftentimes as humans, you're selfish. You'll just be me, 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 me. Let's have a heart that also can mention another person's name because you never know the gap in which you are standing. Thank you, Elder. Amen. I want to just read the online uh, comments before I make my concluding remark. And there are many. I want to read this. Uh, Bosibori, uh, Bosibori has given a lot of comments, but I'll read the first one. Excuse Excuse may be the fuel of fear, but courage is the remedy. I am not qualified. I don't have enough time. What if I fall? As a believer, <laughs> you cannot have excuses on and on. Mm. The, the system here is failing me. But mm -hmm. Seth Nyonje, who is familiar to some of us here, was also commenting and it has disappeared. So <laughs> you'll excuse me if I can't read. Are you able to read there? Um, it has just disappeared from my from my system, but Bosibori has made a lot of comments, including one that I've seen rather late, that the sound system has a problem. I hope it was noticed and it was rectified in good time because we are coming to an end. Now, the, my parting shot is this, and we can be increasing volume for the, for the, for the audience here. Yeah. My parting shot is this. The mission is not yours. You are the mission. Am I, I don't know whether I'm making sense. The mission? It's not yours. Yes. You are actually the mission. So you had better be going. Because what you say, what you do, how you react is preaching. Yes. What you do, what you say, how you react is going to help us all. Yes. Or not help us all. Yes. Okay. It has come. Uh, let's, let's read that one of yours. You will allow me to use hers to read other online views. Uh, Bosibori again says, You see, you are sin and disobedience not only affect your life, but the lives of others, which is resonating very well with my parting shot. The mission is not yours. You are the mission. Um, uh, Bosibori, you really were following us very well. Uh, but I wish I could read them. If only that time will not allow me. But Seth Nyonje says, excuses we make to avoid God's mission today from traveling home in December or any other holiday is a, ta is a Tashish type of excuse. <laughs> Poor PA system that you, are, you can't preach as you sing. It is raining. And you can't it's ruining, it is ruining my birthday. <laughs> Okay, he didn't come to church because uh, he has an excuse. I want to end it there and ask the online viewers to kindly read the book of Jonah, the entire book. Read the book of Nahum. Read Second Kings um, chapter... Uh, is anybody can help me refer there quickly? Second uh, Kings... I will just read Second Kings, you will get some story there. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 24, 
And uh, don't forget to read Isaiah, the text we read, as the memory text, and keep it a memory. Here am I, O Lord, send me. May I ask uh, Nairobi East Choral, Nairobi East Choral, uh, immediately after the prayer, please uh, put the volume up. Nairobi East Choral, volume, they can hear me. Nairobi East Choral, if you could kindly come up front to sing the song, Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling. As we stand for a word of prayer, we will be expecting you to be coming. Let us believe and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness. We have studied your word that is telling us that your mission is my mission. We need to take this mission wherever you send us. How we pray that may you give us the strength to say that here am I, O Lord, send me. I commit every program that is coming ahead into your hands, that may you lead and may you guide. And may the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to dwell in us today, because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.